Stuart Broad has made it, which is good news. <laughs> which is good, because I'm going to start with the bowling with our coaching clinic. Now, this is Charlie. He's age nine. He's from Southampton. Any tips for him? And he's only been playing for a year, I think. That's brilliant. So we're going to slow it down. Well, the outcome's nice. Yep. It's off stump. I, I mean, I, I think in the run-up there could maybe be... It's nice and straight-lined, and bowling's all about straight lines, but I think the knees probably need to pick up a little bit more um, so you can bring a bit more energy in. And I think with the arms as well, when we, when we put a ball in our hand, it makes us run quite unnaturally sometimes. You'd always run with your arms going straight, but you put a ball in your hand, it sometimes makes your arms go sideways. And we think about straight lines with bowling. So immediately in the run-up, I'd start with the run-up and think about picking the knees up to the sky a bit more and, and getting the, the arms working in a straight line. And that ultimately helps you align to your target a bit more. Because the mindset, how I used to visualise it a bit, was having a bit of string on my chest that would be tied to off stump. And that string, follow that string all the way to off stump, and that's a straight line. So my, when I deliver the ball, my line shouldn't miss. A lot of the time we run and we sort of wobble around and angle around, which makes it quite difficult to then deliver the skill when, and, and feel balanced. So I'd put a little bit more energy in the knees in, in the run-up. Think about um, at the delivery stride, a bit of string that's tied to off stump but also lifting us up. You don't want to yeah. be collapsing at the, delivery, uh, at the delivery stride. So think about being tall as you can. And one thing with the front arm, I think on that front arm just goes a bit too quick and I was a, a bad example of that as a, a test match bowler. My front arm slayed a little bit, but that's why I wore a, a sweatband. It wasn't necessarily to wipe the sweat away, it was a target for me that I could try and hold my front arm uh, in a straight line. So I would pick the front arm up a little bit higher, just practice almost counting to one yeah. with the front arm as high as you can because then that's the driving force that will bring us back down and bring power through the through the right arm so I, I i just concentrate a little bit on the run up get a bit more energy in the knees and the the string to the the stump and then the front arm higher to be able to allow us to drive through okay well, well done charlie he's only been playing for a year and i'm going to move on a six-year-old dominic ricky this one's for you because he's a, a batter only six and he's whacking it in the back garden what do you see here I see a lot of good stuff yeah. there. He's got the bent knees in his stance here. He's got that back lift up nice and high, something that Nasser was talking about yesterday. Like a lot of the, the modern players are standing with the toe of the bat up in the air, which I think actually makes the, back, the bat swing that little bit easier. You've got more control of the bat because it's a, a, a shorter swing, if you like, albeit because it's coming from high, it's, a, it's quite a long swing. But he's doing a, doing a lot of things right there. One thing, he, I mean, the, the angle's probably not perfect for us, but if you look at his... Look at his stance. Maybe he can just open that front foot out a little bit. He's very, very square on with his feet, which I know all too well with the ball coming back in. If you get two side on, sometimes it makes it hard to get a little bit of access to the ball. But there you go there. There's a, a perfect on drive. He opens that front foot out nicely, gives him access to the ball, and allows him to play with a straight bat down through a long line. I mean, I, I love, with little kids like this, I love them seeing standing there and hitting the ball as hard as they can yeah, along the ground. Like, if I want to coach anyone from 2 to, to 15, you know, the first thing I'll say to them is find a way to hit the ball as hard as you can, but hit it along the ground on both sides of the wicket, and then, you know, then you can start building on hitting shots over the top of the field. But there's a lot of, a lot of the basics there are very, very good. Very good. Right, let's move to Harry, who is 10. He's a right-arm seamer. We got him from behind in an oval invincible shirt. Again, the run-up with the arms. What do you think, Brody? I can yeah, re-cue yeah, that and yeah, do it again. Yeah, a little bit with the, the arms, and I think... When the arms are going sideways, what that then leads you into is being uh, in your load up. The, the load up is coming out wide, which again has, has a reaction, which means then your front arm is having to work extra hard to get the ball to the target. A little tip when I, which I did when I was 17 actually, because I used to load up, load up there. I, I, for about a winter, I worked on tapping this, my bowling hand on my shoulder, just to bring it into more of a straight line. Because my reaction was, if I loaded there, then my front arm to balance loaded there right, and it okay. wasn't working together. So I, I worked on tapping my front arm on my, front sh on my back shoulder, which then helped my front arm work together. So I think, yeah, running technique, again, don't, don't run sideways like that. Try and get the arms pumping that way. And then the load up, just, just practice tapping that bowling arm on there. It doesn't mean that you'll do it in the game all the time but just put, practice tapping that arm on the, on the shoulder. And also, don't rush through the action. Sometimes, you know, we, we have this run-up and we get to the delivery and we think, oh, I'm going to bowl it, gotta be, it's got to be really fast. It's all about timing and tempo in, in that moment. So a lot of the time, in my jump, 
If I felt rushed, I'd count to one and try and hang in the air a little bit. You don't lose momentum because you're dragging that through from your run-up, but jump, count to one. You're almost like breathing before the, the momentum comes. Jump, count to one, bang, bowl. OK, uh, let's go back to batting. Hunter, this is Alfie. He's 13. Any tips, he says. It was a nice cover drive to start with. I mean, he's got a very strong bottom hand. You see, actually, top hand grip. If you have a look at how strong his top hand is around on the top part of the handle, if you can go back to have a look at that, yeah, you can see how strong that top hand is. And he gets the bat, when he picks the bat up, he gets the bat in a little bit behind him, which is, which is not ideal. It makes, it makes offside shots easy. If you think about where the bat, if you're there and the bat's coming back in behind you there, it's easy to hit off, offside shots. But if the bat gets back in behind you, then it's hard to get access to the ball on, on the leg side. So um, th that, yeah, for him, I would, I, would, I would tell him to maybe, the hardest thing to change in anyone is their grip. But his, his is very strong around here, which creates a very closed bat face. And when he picks it up, the bat goes back in behind him, a la a, a Graham Smith or someone like Ollie that. Ollie Pope's a little bit like Ollie, Ollie Pope's very, very flat. He's not, he's not back in behind him here. He's very flat with his bat face, but he picks it up towards first slip. This youngster here could actually work on just opening his top hand up a little bit on the handle, which will allow him then for a wrist cock, and then the wrist cock will allow the bat to be picked up out towards sort of second slip rather than back in behind him. Okay. He, he, the biggest trouble he would, he would have there, and it's, it's interesting that he's, he sent that clip in because that'll be his easiest shot. That'll be the best shot for him to play that cover drive. I'd love to see him try and hit an on drive or a shot through mid wicket because with the bat round there, that's where he would really struggle. It's hard to change your grip, though. It feels so unnatural when you do it, doesn't it? Because you pick it up naturally, and that's the way you go with it. Yeah, and, and young kids in particular, they're looking for the strongest grip possible, yeah. right? They're, they're looking for a way that they've got complete control of the bat and they can swing the bat hard and fast. So you, that's not unusual for, for young kids, especially now because they're playing a lot of short-form cricket, and sometimes the best technical kids slip through the, the cracks and the, and the bigger, more powerful kids are getting more of an opportunity. So, But for him, I think going forward would be one thing to definitely think about working on. OK, going to go to the bowling again. Levi, how old is he? He's nine. He wants to know how to bowl an outswinger. If you see this, a lot of it is going in, which isn't the mm. worst thing in the world, and he's obviously accurate because he's hitting the stumps, but is that a, an action thing or potentially a grip thing, would you say? A bit of both and a strength thing. I think it's easier to bowl in a way swinger when you get a little bit stronger, you can stand a bit taller in your action. First of all, I, my belief was your best in-nipper or in-swinger, bowls people, your best away swinger beats the outside edge. Right. So I always liked this angle, but it's nice to have the option to be able to go away. I think with that action at the moment, uh, tactically work on a wobble seam that can stand up and go away, rather than trying to swing the ball away too much. So this would be the, this would be the shiny side at the moment, is swinging the ball in like that, with a wobble seam to stop it swinging ball in, maybe angle the seam towards like a leg slip, angle the seam towards a leg slip and hold it facing your, your, your fingers across it so it doesn't come out straight, it comes out wobbling like that. So you can pick your line and it will stay on that line because it won't swing in. So a wobble seam will then hopefully nip away uh, and catch the outside edge. Um, to work on a way swinger, the shoulders will need, to, will need to turn a little bit more. So at the moment, quite open, which is allowing the ball to swing in. A, a tip you can do, maybe just walking through, you don't have to do this off a full run up, is just practice turning the shoulders a little bit more. So turning the shoulders, just bowl the ball on a full toss to a friend uh, and just figure out what that feels like with the shoulders turning a lot more. It might feel quite unnatural and yeah. I wouldn't do that off a full run up to start. I used to do it even at 36, 37, just walking through, turning the shoulders and trying to, trying to get that away shape. And, and obviously you have to change the ball over. You have the ball to swing in with the shiny side like that. Bring the shiny side to that side and angle that now to second slip with a with a quite a nice light grip. The, the, the key thing I think to, to swing bowling as well is not gripping the ball too hard. You hear with golf swing you don't grip grip it too much. If you're gripping so much, it's very hard for the fingers to relax and release the ball in the way you want it to. So I used to imagine my fingertips were almost there on the fingers because I'd run in a bit like that because it would keep my everything relaxed. If I grip it hard, I immediately get tension in my elbow, my shoulder tenses up, and then it, it becomes a problem on release. So to keep relaxed, you know, I'd always, you know, you'd see me first few test balls of a test match running in like that, and that's maybe because you're a bit nervous, you're trying to be as relaxed as possible, and eventually it does release off the fingers, but the key to a weight swinger is not gripping it too tight because you hold on to the ball too long for it to, for it to swing. Back to batting, this is Zion Khan, who is how old Zion? He's seven. Now, the question is, he's wondering if his front foot is collapsing a little bit. But he also wants to know how 
to play the pull shot. Uh, perhaps if he practised it, because all of these are on the front foot. But it looks pretty good to me. I tell you, I like the backyard net stuff he's got going on there. That's good, fantastic. Yeah, he's using his feet as well. He's been watching Ben Duckett and Co at the top of the order for England, running down the wicket to the, the half volleys. Um, Look, it doesn't look like he's collapsing his front leg at all. Yeah, no. there, that bat swing looks really good. I mean, the, the ball is actually going off the bat where it, where it looks like it should go, which is always a, a good sign. One, talk about bat plane and bat swing. One thing that I used to, to really work hard on and to, to know that you've got your bat swing right is when you hit any sort of drive, keep your eyes and head over the ball. And when the bat goes through, if the bat swing's perfect, it looks like the ball actually comes out of the bottom of the bat, out of the toe of the bat. So the best straight drives you hit, by the time you look up and you finish your swing, it looks like the ball's been stuck on the bottom of the bat and it's just gone straight through like that. Like, like you do it with a putt. You think about, there's so many similarities between golf and cricket, I believe. Same with the putting stroke, right? Keep your head down, hit it like that. The putter continues on and it's almost like the ball is stuck on the face of the putter and it starts on, on the line you want. There's a lot of really good things going there, but yeah, if you want to get better at anything, you've got to practice it. If you want to get better at the pull shot, be working on that on that every day because in junior cricket as well, um, you know, with the ball bounce, with, with the slower bowlers, if they bowl the right length, the ball bounces really high. So you don't actually play a lot of drives no, as, as youngsters. Right. You play a lot of shots off the back foot. So it'd be definitely worth getting out the bat with that little setup he's got there and work on whacking those pull shots into that that wooden fence he's got on the leg side there. With putting tips, I knew that's why we had Brian Harmon along to give us some golfing tips. You see. <laughs> yeah, <it's down laughs> left, left <laughs> Just one thing I want to ask about. When kids are batting, sometimes they sort of stand like that, sometimes they stand like that. What is the correct balance for a kid to have in his stance? Well, you talk about balance, you, you always talk about the most, most athletic position you can get in. I mean, if you think about slip fielding anywhere in the field, the most athletic position is when your feet are about shoulder width apart. As soon as you get any wider than that, it's hard to move your feet quickly. And as soon as you get any more narrow than that, it's hard to keep mm. your balance. So that's the, that's the balancing act between... And you look at some of the great batsmen around the world. Kevin Peterson, hugely wide stance. Graham Smith, hugely wide stance. Stephen Smith's almost got his feet stuck together, right? You know, with his toes in. And he does, most things he does doesn't look right, but he gets a, a pretty good outcome for it. Look, at the end of the day, it's, it's about finding what works for you yeah. and not trying to be the same as anybody else. Under, and, and for coaching, it, it's... The biggest point for a coach is understanding the technique of the player that you're working with, trying to refine that and make that the best that it, that it can be and working with that. Not, not, not trying to turn everyone into a Sachin Tendulkar or a Jacques Callas because you do that, you, the, the, the individual then loses what's made them successful in the first place and it becomes really hard to find that. And there's another similarity with golf. You see it all the time, right? Someone wins a major, goes away, looks for extra dis distance the next year, tries to change and before they know it, they forgot what they had in the first place and they become a mess. OK, back to bowling. Logan is 11, and Brody simply asked you to have a look. Actually, that's the wrong one, but we'll have a look with the batting. Come back to the bowling. Where's the other one I was going to show you? Where is he? Uh, oh, there we go. Done that one? No. Yes. It would be good for the umpire's call on the stumps. Yeah, it would, wouldn't he? Lovely action. Well, that's what I thought. Yeah. Any, any thoughts at all on that one? I think you said it yesterday, but that's Nassim, Nassim Shah. Nassim Shah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's, a lo it's lovely straight lines, what we talk about. I, I, I'd argue maybe there's just a little bit... If you had an umpire in there as well, I wonder if we're ru running a little bit too close to the stumps. Maybe I'm talking a foot, wow. two foot, a little bit wider for, the, for that angle to come in at off stump. Because if you're running from dead straight, you almost feel like you're yeah. getting a bit close to the umpire. You Chris to, Wokes it. Lord. Yeah, yeah, you have to then sort of get your momentum out a little bit and then you, then you lose your, your alignment. So I'm, we're talking a foot maybe. And that doesn't mean that you move a foot and you're, then you're aiming at width. You're actually moving a foot but still twisting your shape towards the off stump. So, I mean, that action looks, looks really great. It uses the front arm nicely. Uh, gets over the front leg. Um, looks like Dad's about to give some advice there, doesn't it? Like, a bit fuller, I want to practice with drives, but no, that looked, uh, that looks really nice. This is my favourite, Joshua. He's just two. Now this is just, a, I mean, this is just fantastic, isn't it? Two years old in the back garden with whoever's throwing the ball, mum, dad, doesn't matter. Just whack it. But isn't it interesting how we're seeing all these kids stand now? They're all standing there with the bat up yeah. in the air. Like that's, I think, and you know, NASA did a great piece with Sangra and I yesterday about the modern player standing there with the bat up. I, I think that's a, a result of, of trying to find and create power. The amount of T20 and short form cricket we're all playing now. I think standing like that's more in a, a power position like a baseballer would stand, right? They're, they're there, they're prepared early, they're ready to hit the ball. So 
that's that's 100%. That's great. Like, teach kids how to hit the ball hard, let them go from there.